making a run at it, aren't you? Rolling up a stake and going to the end. The number one poker internet show is now on the radio. This is the Mark Oak Show. The Mark Oak Show. For the next 60 minutes, we're going to talk poker news, entertainment, and have lots of Sin City surprises. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free. Toll free. One eight six six eight two zero five five two eight. That's one eight six six eight two zero K L A V. Now let's bring on the hosts. Go it all in. Here is Mark Hoke. Alan, I don't believe you just did that to me. You just gave me a goofy grin, and I just totally lost it. This is what's going to happen today. I'm going to warn everybody. The the Broncos that showed up at my house was the word bronchitis, unfortunately. Yeah, you guys can laugh at that and help out a little. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. So this should be a comedy of errors on my part today, but I'm going to try and hold it together, together for you all. Thanks for being with us here on the Mark Hoke Show. We have a jam-packed hour of poker news, entertainment, and some of the coolest cats around. No doubt about it. We'll, of course, uh, have the Grindettes call in with Katie Dozier. We've got Joe Payne from the now humbled Nevada Poker League. I have my tail between my leg. Is we, Pete, uh, we got to beat from Oklahoma last night. This Pete's gang from Oklahoma, from what I understand, you guys pretty much stomped their guts in last yesterday. How'd that go? It went real good, and we enjoyed doing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a great time, Mark. It was a good time. Oh, boy. Well, we'll get to talk a little bit more about that That tail whipping later but we also of course two very special guests in studio we have the season 10 world poker tour player of the year joe sirak join us joe how are you i'm good hello everybody he's just such a mellow guy it's unbelievable if i was the season 10 world poker tour player of the year i'd be like super perky all the time and you know, i'd probably be wearing what, what did they give you for that what did you what did you actually win for player of the year? Uh, a big old trophy and some hotel rooms, some food. Uh, that's about it. So I, I tattoo the trophy on my bicep, <laughs> and somebody came up and said, so who are you? I'd be like, yeah, right there, baby. <laughs> right there. And, of course, speaking of the World Poker Tour, one of the lovely Royal Flush girls, Jeannie Duffy, joining us. Jeannie, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me. I've only been trying to get Jeannie lined up here for you guys. Well, both of you lined up for, what, three months now? Yeah, it's been a little bit. You're a busy kid. Yeah, pretty busy. Yeah, Glad we could make it today. Well, I'm very happy to have you all here. So some interesting happenings in the world of poker. <laughs> Joe, Joe's laughing. So how about we check it out? Let's get to the read brought to you by Poker News. Scanning the poker tables from around the world. This is the read brought to you by PokerNews.com. Speaking of the World Poker Tour, of course, the... Borgata Winter Open just finished up. Once the controversy got all settled out, we have a new guy on the Champions Cup. We want to give congratulations to Anthony Morella for taking that down. Picks up $842,379 for a big win as he knocked off David Paradis. A lot of people thought David was going to win that thing. Uh, Anthony Mayo finished in third. Jared Jaffe, big name there, finishing fourth. And we'll just let that go because I'm not going to get tangled on any Russian names today. <laughs> Sorry there, Vlad, but uh, we're going to take a pass. But a, a great event out there. And Joe, were you out at the at the Borgata? Yeah, I, I came in 30 something. You know, uh, I day forward it the last two times, but uh, couldn't get to the final table. Real quick, your reaction to everything that happened out there uh, with the chip controversy? What what was your experience with all that? Yeah, I got there after that most of it happened, but yeah, everyone was talking about it. And I mean, it just seemed like a guy just went kind of crazy. Like he had a plan and then I was hearing about him going all in blind and Really? Yeah. Wow. And uh obviously the flushing the chips down the toilet makes no sense and you've You've obviously lost your mind before you decided to do that. Yeah, went a, went a little Captain Encino on that mm -hmm. one. So, so, but uh, of course, a great, otherwise great event out at the Borgata and uh, Genie. Of course, you get to go to all these World Poker Tour events yeah. all over the world. It's it's something special, isn't it? It is very special. I'm very blessed and lucky to be able to go to all these places. I wasn't at the Borgata because I don't get to do every single one. Um, 
Ivy and Angelique were at that one, who are wonderful. But I get to do a lot of them, and I'll, I'll be in Borgata for the championship in April. Well, you so better excited be. for that. Yeah, of course. You're, you're of course. the best. Happy for that. <laughs> Duh. You and Daniel. Are you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they changed it to where only two girls go to each stop this year. So, yeah. So they're going to a few less stops each girl this year. But of course, you guys are going all around the world too. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous, and it's mm -hmm. amazing we get to do that together. But we went to um, this past season. We went to China, uh, J um, Sanya, and then we went to Korea. Well, I went to Korea. He didn't go to Korea, actually. I was in Korea, Jeju Island, which was incredible because that's, so <laughs> that's where that's um, where I'm half Korean. My mother's from there, so. Yeah, amazing. Well, we'll, we'll talk more about the okay. your globe hopping in a little bit. But there was a very interesting interview that former world champion Joe Hashem did uh, for Bluff Magazine recently. We want to hit that because this is a this is, I think, a very intriguing topic. That he believes that poker is dying. And was very outspoken about this, uh, saying, I think poker is dying and it's dying because it's no longer fun to play. Said Antonio Sfondiari is a great example of how to behave uh, when recreational players are playing um, and really got into ripping a lot of guys that have won the world championship that they weren't good representatives of the game. Tore, uh, tore into Jamie Gold and Jerry Yang. And obviously, they had their, their tax issues and so on. Uh, it was a very uh, telling interview to say the least. And uh, Joe, I'm, I'm going to give you the first pop on this. Do you think that, that poker is dying because of uh, you know, the younger players maybe not representing the game the way that people think they should? Well, I, my opinion is, is that the, the bar was set so high after Moneymaker and the internet boom. Uh, and I think a lot of things have transpired since that Black Friday. So there has a, been a, a, a big decrease in the amount of players playing online which trickles down to they're not showing up in the brick and mortar because a lot of the online sites were giving away seats to big tournaments. Well, that's not happening anymore, at least not for American plays anyway. And you see around here, especially in Las Vegas, a poker room is actually closing. So Joe is probably on to something as far as I think what's going to happen is you're going to have just the, the big poker rooms are the only ones that be able to survive. The little guy's just going to go by the wayside with a number of smaller rooms closing recently in Las Vegas. Yeah, and uh, we've got Katie Dozier on the line with our Grindettes segment, too. Of course, uh, make sure you go to Grindettes.com. Follow them at Grindettes and, of course, on Facebook, the Grindettes. Katie, how are you? Good. I have to say, I'm sorry you're sick, but I really enjoyed uh, your Broncos joke. I was laughing way louder than the people you have there. What? I have to say, guys. <laughs> I didn't know if we were allowed to, like, laugh into the microphone. Oh, absolutely. I thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a little late. But anyway, it no, it's all good. Just but, to give you credit. Well, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, Katie, Katie, what are your thoughts about this Joe Hashem interview? Boy, he really uh, tore some people up on this thing. Well, Mark, you know I'm an optimist. So it'd be pretty tough for me to say that I think, you know, the industry I work in is dying. But I really don't think it is. I think maybe, you know, it's a case of like, well, it's dying for him. So he's kind of extrapolating that and saying that's dying for everyone. But I do think he brings up some good points as to there are a lot of things that professional players can do to make it more fun for recreational opponents, and it's definitely something I strive to do, particularly when I play live, but even online it's something that can be done as well. And I think it is important to try to look for growth opportunities and um, you know, not to, to try and make it entertaining, especially when you're playing live, um, particularly a bigger event like the WSOP main event. And, you know, not just treating it as going into it super serious, because if you're really a good player, then you could have the capacity to make it fun for other people, but still be playing your best game also. Do you think it was a fair assessment to tear into some of the, uh, the younger generation of players saying that they, you know, basically you said that all they care about is the money and that's it. Uh, was Is that a fair assessment? I think... Um, First of all, I don't think that, you know, because you win win a tournament or become well-known suddenly in poker, which happens so much in poker, obviously someone goes from you don't really hear about them to they're all over poker news and everything. Um, but I don't think that there's an inherent responsibility for someone to be a good representative of the game. But also I think just because someone isn't someone that I look up to maybe in poker, it doesn't mean they're necessarily a bad representative. You know, some other demographic might be like, hey, this guy's really cool. He's a badass. You know, he's saying really inappropriate things, perhaps like I just did cursing on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully I'm not in trouble for that. You can um, say that one. That's because, okay. 
Okay, good, good. I won't go any, any more vulgar than that. Um, but I think that, you know, it's hard to define what a good representative is. Yeah, it's going to be a, a topic that I think with Joe bringing this debate to the forefront all of a sudden, I know it's getting a lot of attention on social media, so we'll see where all this turns out uh, as we go forward. Well, Katie, thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. And, of course, much grind at love. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope you feel better soon. I hope so, too, because I'm really getting, well, wow. I almost said what I said, a bad, bad word. See, that. Uh-oh. Alan was <laughs> his finger on the button there. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Well, thank you for calling in for the grind. That's certainly do appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, feel better. Thanks. Uh, Thank you. All right. And by the way, since I forgot to do this real quick, of course, the Mark Hoke Show is powered by BlueRail.net and brought to you by PokerAtlas.com, where there's a new table talk feature up there where you can talk about anything poker or non-poker related just for fun. And we do have that question uh, asking about Joe Hashem up on PokerAtlas.com right now. So if you're listening to the show and want to throw your opinion in there, I'll take a look at it real quick. We'll give it a read on the air real fast for you. But, of course, you can get all of the uh, information you need on tournaments, across North America, plus poker room reviews and much more at PokerAtlas.com. And we're also brought to you by Blind Squirrel Apparel, Team Poker Joker, Arctic Blue Cooling Towels, DoubleDigitCovers.com, who nailed the Super Bowl. That was some money, baby. And, of course, I didn't get to the book. Shame on me. And RogueWire.com. So thanks to all those guys for back in the Mark Hoke show. We do appreciate it. So, Joe, I'm going to I'm going to hit you with this one right now is, of course, being a World Poker Tour player of the year to a point. You're one of those guys that Joe's talking about, saying that, you know, the younger generation doesn't care about the, you know, about pushing the game so much. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, how do you feel about that? I mean, does that kind of make you mad when you hear something like that or? Um, no, I mean, I agree with some of his points. Uh, like I'm one of those people that does only care about the money. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh huh. And uh, you know the numbers have been dropping, whereas I feel like you know cash games are still alive because people you know it's more fun to play cash. People are less serious when they're playing it, whereas tournaments everyone's got their headphones on, including me. And he's got some points, but um. I still think it's just dying. He might just think it's dying because the game's getting tougher and some some guys can't keep up with it and it's just not worth it for them to play, some of the professionals. But, I mean, the recreational players still, I feel like, are showing up. And, yeah. Well, and, Jeannie, you're out there all the time at a lot of these events, and you've been doing, you know, being a royal flush girl for quite a while what are you seeing out there because you know you're there for a lot of preliminary events too so you know you can kind of get a pulse from the outside of it of what's happening on the on the floors at all these events what are you seeing um i mean i'm at some of the events i wouldn't say i mean i'm not super involved in poker to really i don't know um you know if i have enough experience but i mean i see i i do see some points and what he's saying i also don't think obviously with anything that you should ge- generalize um, you know, that it's all the young players, um, you know, like Joe said, maybe he is one of them, but there's also some that are out there, you know, trying to entertain or show personality or make it more fun. Um, I mean, so from my point of view, I, I would have to disagree with, with what Joe Hashem was saying. I think I, can I, if I want to yeah. jump in here, I think what Joe Hatchin's problem is, I think he's having trouble handling the new players in their style of play. He's not used to that. Uh, the new players are extremely difficult to read. They will raise with just about anything. They will three bet you light. And I think the guys like Joe Hatch and, and Phil Helmet and the guys that used to the, that play that ABC kind of poker are having a real difficult time readjusting their games to adjust how, and excuse me, Joe, but how the young guns are playing right now. And the young guns are playing a game that is totally almost unreadable you're not really sure what they have at any time because they'll play the same hand three different ways within two orbits possibly or maybe maybe within two levels and joe do you do you agree with that that the yeah. the, the read on plays is so much more difficult mm-hmm. so guys like hatchem and helmet and uh the, some of the old school players are having difficult so that's why they're the ones in my opinion, at a losing interest because now there's not the recreational players who they used to feast upon for years. It doesn't exist anymore. And I think, I think what Joe is bitching about because 
you know, sell more easy money out there anymore. That's a good yeah. point. And I have the same problem, you know, playing against the younger kids instead of the older guys. You know, it's just more like in, like a, a lot of math is involved and you got to do your work off the table. Right. And, you know, it's, it's tougher now. Yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of aspects to this, and we're going to take apart a couple more of them as we go through. We're going to get a commercial break in, um, and we're going to have some fun with our Arctic Blue Keep Your Cool game of the day because if you don't know, these two have been dating for quite a while, so we're going to have some fun with them <laughs> in the Arctic Blue Keep Your Cool game of the day. So let's take a break, and we'll come right back with this all-star panel. Got to love it. Stick around. We'll be right back. The heat is on. Whether you're in the hot seat of a major poker tournament or just dealing with everyday life, stay cool with a brand new Arctic Blue cooling towel. Just wet your reusable and durable Arctic Blue cooling towel in cold water and you'll have instant cooling relief at your fingertips for up to five hours. The towel is lightweight and pliable so you can keep it handy no matter where you are. Plus it's absorbent enough to make sure you and your clothes stay dry while you stay cool. No need to sweat it out no matter what you're doing when you have an Arctic Blue cooling towel handy. So get the same cooling towel used by professional athletes, poker players, first responders, physical therapists, U.S. automakers, and even reality TV stars. So what are you waiting for? Visit them today at arcticblu.com and pick yours up today. Plus, enter the discount code MarkHokeShow when you check out and get 15% off plus free shipping to keep some of your cold hard cash in your wallet. It's like the Arctic Blue Bear says, it's not cool to be hot. So pick up your Arctic Blue cooling towel today. It's time for you to check out RogueWire.com. News, sports, entertainment, and the internet home of The Mark Hoke Show. Don't wait. Let the sparks fly from your computer at RogueWire.com. And, of course, RogueWire.com is powered by BlueRail.net. For over two years, The Mark Hoke Show has trusted BlueRail.net as their exclusive host, and you can too. Visit BlueRail.net for top-level web hosting, website building and maintenance, one-on-one -on -one customer service, and much more. It's time to get on board with your winning combination. BlueRail.net and RogueWire.com. How far do you want to go? PokerAtlas.com has its finger on the pulse of all poker events in Las Vegas and beyond. Beyond. Both on and offline, PokerAtlas.com is made by poker players for poker players and covers North America for every tournament, every day. Join the action by reading and posting your own reviews on PokerAtlas.com. Let everyone know what you really think about poker rooms you visited. PokerAtlas.com also features special offers and online sign-up bonuses for its members as well. Don't forget to like Poker Atlas on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Poker Atlas. PokerAtlas.com also has Twitter accounts for up-to-the-minute information about tournaments in your area. The action starts here at PokerAtlas.com. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Sports betters. Tired of getting beat every week at your sports book? It's time to stop guessing and start winning. We all know cash is king, and it's time to let the team at Double Digit Covers come to the rescue to help you get the positive cash flow you need to live the life you've always dreamed about. Tony Dose and his all-star sports handicapping team will be in your corner to help you beat the point spread, bring excitement and winning to your betting experience, and build your bankroll to levels you never thought possible. Get free winning sports information at DoubleDigitCovers.com and call now for today's free winner at 1-855-489-3500. That's 1-855-489-3500. Stop guessing and start winning today at DoubleDigitCovers.com. One man, his lucky shirt, 
an unforgettable night, and a winning streak that never seemed to end. That's how Blind Squirrel began, and we haven't looked back since. We make the clothes that we want to wear for the places where we want to look and feel our best. The game, the speakeasy, and the casino floor. Blind Squirrel's small batch, high-quality gear is for people too busy grabbing life by the nuts to bother with crappy, ill-fitting clothing. Because like you, we prefer our nights long, our drinks strong, and our lucky shirt to be our most comfortable. So look good, be lucky, and visit BlindSquirrelApparel.com for your new favorite shirt. As an added bonus, you'll receive 20% off your purchase with the promo code HOKE, H-O-K-E. You can also pick up Blind Squirrel Apparel at the Borgata in Atlantic City and in Las Vegas at all Masura stores at Mandalay Bay, Monte Carlo, The Mirage, and MGM Grand. Look good and be lucky with Blind Squirrel Apparel. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. Hey, welcome back to The Mark Hoke Show. I'm your gravelly-toned host today. Do I yeah. really? You think so? All right. Yeah, Barry White made a career of gravelly voices. No, he had a deep voice. He's got a real good voice. Come on, he? man. You know, I don't want to be Barry White right now. <laughs> That's not happening. You're two days away from being Barry White. I hope so. Stop your medication. We'll see. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. Jeez. Well, getting back to the topic about the recreational players, let's go to you, Pete, about this. Yes, sir. Do you feel, you know, being at the ground level where you are running a, a you know, a free roll league in Oklahoma. Do you feel like poker is is dying to the recreational players? Where where do you see it right now? Well, I, I think I think poker's taking a lull a little bit. I don't think it'll ever die. It's such a great sport, Mark. Uh, the competition is what these people play for, and obviously the money. But uh, you know, uh, I got into poker where uh, just right after Money Maker, uh, the boom up with Money Maker, and then these young guns come in. So I had to learn both the old way of playing poker and the new way of poker. And, you know, that's caused certainly a lot of uh, difficulty for the players that have been playing for years and years and years. But uh, I, I think we're at a lull, but I seriously don't think uh, that poker will die out completely. Um, you know, as far as Joe Hashem uh, goes, uh, great player, great individual, great man. You know, who knows what's going through his mind. I know Paul Wasica, who is a uh, – I know their family very well, uh, had opportunity to uh, do some things with their family. They went to my church back in Colorado. Uh, I know him very well. Uh, he plays poker until he gets bored. He finds something else to do. He even said that himself. So, you know, uh, I think these guys like Doyle Brunson, these guys like Phil Helmuth have been doing it forever and ever. It's going to be always in your blood, but sometimes you can get tired, you know, but uh, I don't think poker will ever die. It's just the, the competition itself has been, uh, you know, keeping this thing going and it'll continue. And inc it's, it's been incredible watching these young guns come up and the different uh, diversity of play. It's, it's making it difficult. And I think, uh, It'll catch fire again. I really believe it will. Yeah. Joe, what responsibility do you think, guys, you know, if you go back through the list, for example, you got Ryan Reese as champ right now. Greg Merson you know, was, was out there, but, you know, he plays more of a high roller type style. P.S. Hines disappeared off the face of the earth. Nobody heard from him. Peter Eastgate kind of did the same thing. What responsibility do players like those guys and yourself and, and other top guys out there on the circuit have to promoting the game. Do you feel like you really have a responsibility or is it just something that is a kind of an old school mentality? Um, yeah, I think it's old school mentality. Like some of these guys don't even care if they play much after, I mean, you win like what's $8 million. Are you, do you really care about poker after that? You know, some some people are obsessed with it, but I know if I won that much, uh, I don't know how much poker I'd be playing after that or care about it. Yeah, and it's a very difficult spot for these guys. You know, and Joe, you could probably touch on this: is when you, you know you you hit a big score like that and you change your life. I mean, people forget about that part about, yeah, somebody won eight or $10 million, but it does change your life completely. Now you have money, you can do all the things that you wanna do. How much, you know, how much of a responsibility do you have to give back to the game as opposed to, you know what, I earned the right to go out and do what I wanna do now because I've reached the pinnacle. It's time for me to have some fun. I, I, I know what you're saying here, but I do believe there is an obligation. Um, when, when a game, whether it be poker, football, gives you the luxury of living 
life that you wanted to live and gives you all the amenities, I believe you still need to give something back to the game. You just can't take it and walk away from it because you're not giving anyone else the same opportunity that you have. So uh, these players like uh, that have played and kind of dis- won the main event and then you don't hear from them anymore, uh, I think they're, they're doing the, the game an injustice because the fact that the game was there for them to... to have this opportunity, they should allow others coming behind them for the same opportunity. If they walk away from the game, the interest is lost, and that's. I think it's sad. Yeah, it's it's a very difficult spot, and uh, you know, and Jeannie, I think one thing that's interesting that happens with with people out there. I mean, you're in the public eye a lot, uh, doing what you do, and you know, you do other things besides WPT, where you're out modeling and everything. So people are you know following you pretty tight. How hard is that to be in the public eye? when maybe sometimes you don't want to be? Uh, it can be tough because you do, um, to an extent, have to watch what you do and say, especially with social media, if you're if you're representing a, a specific company any, anyway. But, um, I mean, it can be tough. I mean, some people have the attitude where they, they just don't care. And, I mean, you know, everyone's an individual. I guess if you, you're your own brand, if you don't care what you put out there and what, you know, people think, that's fine. But on the whole, I think you want to represent um, you know, poker or whatever company you're with well and kind of watch yourself a little bit and be a good representative. So, you know, it, it can be tough, but I mean, if you're yourself and you're a good person, then it should work out. Now, one thing that struck me when I listened to the Hashim interview was, you know, he talked about how uh, Jamie Gold and Jerry Yang had the tax problems really tarnished the legacy of the world championship, but then turned around in the same breath and mentioned Greg Reamer as one of his favorites. And obviously he and Greg have a good friendship there, but Greg isn't exactly, you know, had a little issue himself uh, that caused a lot of problems. And then if you start look, going back and looking at some of the, the guys that have been world champions, you're looking at Chris Ferguson, you're looking at uh, Stu Unger, Scotty Wynn did some things that weren't exactly great representations of the game. And, you know, we could keep going back through history of guys that have won world championships that are not the most stellar personalities in terms of people you'd want out there representing the game and it, you know it certainly makes it very difficult to make that case you know hey let's push these guys out here but at the same time do we really want to push these guys out here i think what joe fails to realize is before he came onto the scene poker players were looked upon as not the best kind of people i mean you would walk by i remember coming first coming to vegas and people would you would walk by the poker room and they'd go no, you don't even want to go in there. You know, all the dredges of the earth are in poker rooms. So Joe doesn't realize that what happened before him, you know, he came along with the, the big boom, the TV boom and all that, and everyone was a rock star. But years ago, all the poker players, I mean, I'm a real slim, the charges against him as far as being a pedophile and all that. I mean, they have there's a long history of drug abuse, sexual abuse. So uh, for Joe to say that, you know, this is not the way it's supposed to be, it was really bad years ago. The TV exposure made them all rock stars. And so now, is, as Pete said, there is a lull. I don't think it's ever going away, uh, in my opinion. Uh, there are a couple of characters that probably don't need to be in the forefront for the poker world, uh, Jamie Gold being one of them. And between not paying his partner, tax evasion, whatever's going on. I mean, again, as Pete says, if you're not walking in somebody's shoes, you really shouldn't say anything. But th- there have been situations where there hasn't been the best public relations as far as these these big name poker players, and, 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 and as far as current events, anyway. Joe, what would you assess the overall personality types of your generation of players, as opposed to maybe that group of Joe Hashem and those guys? Mm-hmm. If, if, if you were walking into a poker room, and you know somebody didn't know everybody, what would they see when they meet players like yourself and some of these other guys? Um, I think it depends. Obviously, a lot of us are, you know, a little socially behind you know we didn't do all the things we had we've never had a job and we're just kind of quiet at the table but then there's a you know that's just half of them and the other half of the people you know are fun to play with and and then his same goes for i don't know really what joe hashlin was talking about i feel like it's like a half and half thing between like the older generation, you know, sometimes a lot of them are no fun to play with. So, I mean, yeah. What do you do to make it fun at the table? I mean, you know, you're—I know you're a headphones yeah. guy, well, so you kind of keep and and you're you're the kind of person that keeps yourself. It actually, a lot. it 
it depends on the table for me like i'm not always a headphone guy it just depends who else is at the table like i'm not usually initiating the uh you know the fun atmosphere but if someone's there i'll i'll uh get in on it and it'll be a fun table yeah and you know i i think that's something that you know, when, when Joe started touching on, you know, the TVs dying down and everything else, you know, I think that's another aspect to it, too, that, you know, we just don't have the the programming that we used to have on TV as well. Uh, you know, I think that's causing some problems right now. And, Pete, you're shaking your head. You know, from a recreational standpoint, the lack of good poker programming other than what we have now is causing an issue. Yeah, I, I believe that's true. I mean, it's certainly a factor involved in, in, in it. You know, uh, I, I believe that you know uh, the game's not going to die. I think think we're, again we're going through a lull, and and uh, just like competition, you know, any given any given uh, day, you know, they'll be the the ones that are up and coming that are that are call these stars that have come up and rise up, and we'll get those uh, formidable champions and and the the representatives that we need in this game to continue to to make it to make it work good. So, uh, you know, we have to we have to differentiate differentiate between the humanness and the accomplishments mm -hmm. and that's sometimes very hard to do in a public eye so you know we're dealing with that right now with the with the poker issues and Jeannie you're at a lot of final tables so you see and you know with the WPT broadcast what would you do to make it more fun for people to watch if, if you all of a sudden took over the world poker tour if I was at the table or if I just overall if you could change some things <clears throat> about what would make it more exciting for people at home um Jeez. Well, I guess I don't, if I was if I had control of it, I'm not quite sure. I'd have to put some more thought into that. But if I was at the table, um, I guess I mean it's kind of what Joe was saying. You know, some some people like to talk more, some don't. If it's not their personality to, you know, talk a lot or be funny or make jokes, like that's not their personality, and they shouldn't have to concentrate on that. They should be able to concentrate on the game. But if they do have that kind of personality, then I think they should kind of just put it out there more. Um, I don't know. Maybe make every player say a joke or something. I don't know. I mean, you can't really force people to, you know, quote unquote, be funny or entertaining. But, um, geez, if I was there, I just maybe you know, jokingly make fun of each other more. I don't know. I think they it's, need more of you on my, <laughs> that Have a royal flesh girl at every final table, and that'll make it a little more interesting. I think <laughs> that would be a definite plus. Joe, you're smiling over there. Uh, I, I have an opinion. I think, you know, we, we all grateful, we're all grateful for ESPN covering the World Series the way they do. But I think they, they dropped the ball drastically on this one when they went to just basically covering the final table. And not years ago, they used to follow character players in the beginning. And you mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you kind of had they develop kind of little cheering sections for these players. You know, the, the guys that are really off the wall. and they, they added some flavor to the tournament as opposed to sitting there and watching nine players fold, raise, bet. Uh, you know, there was no interest. I believe what ESPN did years ago was, you know, they would, they would follow a couple of players throughout the tournament and keep on going back to them. But now they're just focusing on the, the final tables, and I think that's what's lost the interest. There's so many hands you can watch as opposed to, hey, let's develop some characters here. Let's let's you know, let's attach ourselves to a certain player and and cheer them through. Where we're only picking up the coverage when we're down to the final nine or ten players. Yeah, it, it's a trick. I mean, you know, do you cover the event or do you cover the people? Right. I, I think you know? covering the people is what adds interest to the game. The, the the average recreational player sees himself as that guy. I can do that. I can be a character at the table. I have a chance. But when they only see millions of dollars of chips and nine players you know they, they they can't envision themselves being there but they can envision themselves being in day one and day two and espn kind of latching onto them because they're a little bit of a character yep speaking of characters you know what time it is by the way <laughs> it's, <a> joke, sorry. <laughs> it's time for the arctic blue keep your cool game of the day it's time for the arctic blue keep your cool game of the day joe's bracing genie for this we're, I, 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 I had to have some fun with these two today. So we're, gonna, we're not going to play the new Alert game, but it's, uh, the, we've been dating for a long time. How long have you two been going out? Well, I like to say um, officially it's been about a year. Unofficially, it's been about two years. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we're going to find out how well you two know each other. Okay. Right. Taking some newlywed style game here. So, 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 Jeannie, is there, is there, it's like me against him. Like, who? Yeah, we're gonna I see who gonna knows win. each other best. Now, Jeannie, I'm gonna ask you win. to leave the room. I'm gonna ask oh, you a few okay. questions. All right, All right and now? then we'll have you come back in. Okay. All right. 
So, so Alan, you can you can verify these uh, answers for me. We have Jeannie come back in. So, so Joe, I'm going to ask you three questions, and okay. then we're going to have Jeannie come back in. Let's see how well you know Jeannie. All right, okay, here's your here's not your fir- going to be good. Here's your fir- <laughs> here's your first question. When you had your first kiss, would she say it was more like kissing Tramp from Lady and the Tramp, Woody Woodpecker, or Daffy Duck? Hmm. So you got Woody Woodpecker pecking away. You got the slobbering Daffy Duck and mm-hmm. you know the super romantic. Real gonna, quick, I'm gonna go with the sloppy. Show. Gonna go with the Daffy Duck. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing that I do that I know will tick Genie off is what? Um. Uh, he's perfect, Joe. <laughs> he's perfect. <laughs> he's going down. I don't know. Just. Uh... Not talking, I think. Not talking. All right, we got that. The one friend of Genie's that drives me crazy is who? Wow. Uh, and it can be in a good way, too. But Yeah. yeah. I don't a, want to get, get you in a, too much trouble. That's a tough one. I mean, none of them are really... They're, they're pretty just normal. Yeah, you got one? Then pick a name. Pick a name. All right. Um... Let's go with Jordan. Jordan, all right. Okay, let's bring Jeannie back in. Bring Jeannie back in here. We'll, we'll see how we how we do on this. All right, Jeannie, have a seat. Let's say let's find out if uh, how well you know what Joe's going to say to these answers. We'll we'll go in reverse order. Here's the first one. The one friend of Jeannie's that drives me crazy is. So who would Joe say that is? That drives him crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, I, I miss. Can I redo it? Wait, what? <laughs> uh Oh, you thought of you thought of somebody now. Yeah. Can we uh, give him another? Okay, I'll, I'll give. Okay, we'll we'll I'll give you a chance on this. Who? Cut out? No, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. okay. We'll, we'll improvise. Um, it's between two. Uh, Jordan or Amy? <laughs> uh. Jordan. Oh, nice. <laughs> Stay with it. Yeah, Good call. Right. Jordan was correct. Very but nice. I, it, that was definitely wrong. It, it's Lori. Oh, he was, oh, yeah, he was going to go with Lori. I was thinking my Vegas friends. I have friends yeah. in Delaware and I have friends in Vegas. He said Jordan okay. first, so okay. we'll, we'll still get right. the point. <clears throat> the one thing that Joe does that he knows will tick you off is what? Leave the toilet seat up. Oh, no. <laughs> no? Oh, wait, wait, do I get one more no. shot? That doesn't really tick me off. You know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. He was. He said. To, he said to talk. Not talking. Okay. I was literally. I was going to say something about not responding much. Uh, okay. <laughs> when you when you had your first kiss, was it more like kissing Tramp from Lady and the Tramp, a very romantic? Wait, way. you're asking how he how, how oh, he would he answer. Okay. This. Was it more like kissing Tramp from Lady and the Tramp, Woody Woodpecker, or Daffy Duck? So Woody Woodpecker, quick pecks and. Wait, Daffy so he Duck would be kissing slobber. Lady from Lady in the Tramp, though. It'd be like, who is it like kissing? Was for like, me or for him? For you. For me, okay. The Tramp, Woody Woodpecker, or who? Daffy Duck. Oh. <laughs> the Tramp. The Tramp. No, Joe said it was more like Daffy Duck. How? Wait, how do the ducks tramp's kiss? The Tramp's romantic, and Daffy Duck's like sloppy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. okay. I didn't know Daffy. I yeah, didn't know Daffy's Daffy kinda, Duck was sloppy. Oh, I see that. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> well, so we got. So you got. <laughs> but one. I was thinking like dogs were like slobbery, like yeah, that's you know. Uh, Lady in the Tramp was kind of <laughs> cute. One. Okay, so you got one. All okay. right, so Joe, you're out of here. Right. So we're gonna. <laughs> yeah. Dang. All right, so we'll see if. It, so Jeannie got one right. You have to so, close your ears because you can hear through the door. Okay, so here. <laughs> okay, so as Joe steps out of the room, here we go. Jeannie, are you ready? Yes. Okay. What is the best date you and Joe have ever had? Oh man. Well, Joe's memory is admittedly, he'll admit, not so good. So I'm gonna go with a more recent one, which was um actually just two days ago for my birthday. And we went I mean it's just simple, but we went to a show which was uh we went to Michael Jackson one. Okay. Which is an amazing show, and then he took me to a really nice dinner at uh I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it's by Joel Rubishan at at MGM, la, la something. Okay, so we got the birthday um, date from yeah, two days Yeah, that's the one ago. that comes wow, to my mind. I mean, good. I have to sit here and think about all our birthday dates, but... Yeah, birthday, yeah, yeah. the Michael most Jackson. recent one. Yeah. 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 All right. The grooming or bathroom habit I have that Joe can't stand is what? Grooming. 
Because, you know, we all have problems in the, you know, with our ladies in the, when they're getting <laughs> ready to go out. Probably just taking too long. Taking Is too long? Yeah. All right. That, that counts. All right. And, of course, it wouldn't be a new little game question without asking something like this. In the bedroom... Is Joe more like a roaring tiger, a speedy hummingbird, or a lumbering sea turtle? Wait, hold on. What is it now? In the bedroom, is Joe more like a roaring tiger, mm-hmm. a speedy hummingbird, or a lumbering sea turtle? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So now here's the thing. Is it what, what he really thinks I would say or what he would say? Yeah, about himself? He, well, you know what he's going to say, whatever he's going to answer. So. Well, I think he's going to go with what he would say about himself. I think he's going to say this. The speedy. Speedy hummingbird. Speedy All right. Hummingbird. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens here. I'm not let's saying get... that's what I would say. Okay. That makes it, that's going to make it even worse. All right, Joe. But that's Joe. how I think he would answer. All right, Joe. Are you ready? You, you, <laughs> I, I think you should be very scared at this point. <laughs> All right. All right, Joe. What would Jeannie say is the best date that you and her have ever had? All those romantic nights, yeah, all over the world. I'm just laughing. So and much. and Jeannie's dying over here. I don't know. And we had dinner at the Eiffel Tower. No, oh. not quite. She actually said it was the birthday date that you guys just had a couple days ago. Oh, I just know nice. that your memory's so not good. that good. I was just going to go with the most recent. So you're peaking, yeah. and that that's that's not a bad thing. The grooming or bathroom habit that she has that you cannot stand is what. Just putting on makeup for a long time. There you go. I'll give. I'll give that. I'll give that. Taking too long. Yeah, I'll give. I'll give that. All right. So there's one. So Joe, you can actually win this thing. Are you ready? Last All question. Right. What did Jeannie say you were most like in the bedroom? A roaring tiger, a speedy hummingbird, or a lumbering sea turtle? A roaring tiger. <laughs> I hate to say it, but she said that you would say a speedy hummingbird. <laughs> Huh. <laughs> That's not what I think, but I, I thought you were going the way your mom, like I thought you were going to say that about yourself. I think she outthought the room you, on that one a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right. She, My opinion is the Roaring Tiger. Of absolutely. course it is. She put him on a well, different what hand. Do, what is, why do you think I would think Hummingbird? Because you're always. Self-deprecating. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. See, that's what that's what happens on the newlywed game, right? All right, there. it's over. So we're done. So it's a tie. So you know what? That's oh. that's love, right there. there we're go. all even. Perfect. So there you go. Oh, look at that! Nice kiss and everything. All right, let's take a break, and we'll come right back with the rest. This whole gang of crazies right here on the Mark Oak Show. Thanks for joining us. Betters. Tired of getting beat every week at your sports book? It's time to stop guessing and start winning. We all know cash is king, and it's time to let the team at Double Digit Covers come to the rescue to help you get the positive cash flow you need to live the life you've always dreamed about. Tony Dose and his all-star sports handicapping team will be in your corner to help you beat the point spread, bring excitement and winning to your betting experience, and build your bankroll to levels you never thought possible. Get free winning sports information at DoubleDigitCovers.com and call now for today's free winner at 1-855-489-3500. That's 1-855-489-3500. Stop guessing and start winning today at DoubleDigitCovers.com. It's time for you to check out RogueWire.com. News, sports, entertainment, and the internet home of the Mark Hoke Show. Don't wait. Let the sparks fly from your computer at RogueWire.com. And, of course, RogueWire.com is powered by BlueRail.net. For over two years, the Mark Hoke Show has trusted BlueRail.net as their exclusive host, and you can too. Visit BlueRail.net for top-level web hosting, website building and maintenance, one-on-one customer service, and much more. It's time to get on board with your winning combination BlueRail.net and RogueWire.com. How far do you want to go? At Team Poker Joker, we build innovative, high-performance, poker-focused apparel designed to keep you cool and calm in tough situations. 
Wait, no we don't. We've just got a cool brand representing the suits of this beautiful game called poker. Our gear won't make you better, but it will keep a smile on your face. So don't be so serious and show you know how to have fun. Get your Poker Joker gear today at TeamPokerJoker.com. Grin and win today at TeamPokerJoker.com. PokerAtlas.com has its finger on the pulse of all poker events in Las Vegas and beyond. Beyond. Both on and offline, PokerAtlas.com is made by poker players for poker players and covers North America for every tournament every day. Join the action by reading and posting your own reviews on PokerAtlas.com. Let everyone know what you really think about poker rooms you visited. PokerAtlas.com also features special offers and online sign-up bonuses for its members as well. Don't forget to like Poker Atlas on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Poker Atlas. PokerAtlas.com also has Twitter accounts for up-to-the-minute information about tournaments in your area. The action starts here at PokerAtlas.com. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. Okay, we've got everybody under control in here now. No, no hurt feelings or anything like that. Nope. We talked it out. Plenty of love. By the way, Mark, you did a wonderful job as Bob Eubanks for that, that segment. I just didn't, I didn't get to say making whoopee. Like, <laughs> I, I, I thought there was going to be a whoopee, whoopee. question. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I don't know. I just didn't feel like going there. Okay. I figured I'd save it, but hey, by the way, uh, you know, another interesting rumor that's going around uh, that I wanted to bounce off you guys was the WSOP main event is talking about there's a rumor it's going to be a $10 million guarantee for first place that they're going to be making the whoever wins it guaranteed 10 million bucks. Do you think it's a good idea? I mean, it's it's a very intriguing thought. What was it last year? Eight, uh, eight and a half, I think. Yeah, it was around eight and a half million for the winner. And um, it was twelve for Jamie Gold, right? That was the yeah. Biggest Jamie one. Gold, Jamie Gold's year, which was the peak at eighty-seven, seventy-three players, uh, was twelve million dollars. Yeah. Ryan Reese won eight point three million last year. Can they get there? Well, they'll to probably a point, to, with a normal prize pool. Yeah, or they're gonna just, have to infuse they'll just it. screw up the prize pool most likely to make it happen. So it's probably not a good idea. I, mean, yeah. I don't think it's going to attract that many more people because of it. I, yeah. don't know. I don't know. I don't think anyone is going to not play it because it's $10 million and nobody's going to play because it's $10 million. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, if you win $8 million or $10 million, is there really a difference? Yeah. I mean, you know, Pete, do you, th do you think that putting up a $10 million guarantee is going to bring more players in for first place? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I, re I really don't think so. Um you know, is it going to entice more players to play because there's a set guarantee? You know, uh, don't know until you try it, but I personally don't think so. I mean, you know, I, I just think that it's, you know, you're playing for the world championship, and you know you're going to be playing for a boatload of money. It mm -hmm. doesn't, you know, I mean, Joe, you're not going to sit there and turn it down because it's $6 million, right? Right. 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 It's the biggest tournament in the world. Yeah, so what mo extra motivation do you need to play a tournament like that? You know, you're already, you know, if you're going trying to drag everybody down to Hard Rock in Florida or something like that, that's one thing. Right. But you're talking about the granddaddy of them all on this. Why would you need to put and, a $10 million guarantee And here's the, here's the potential problem that, that happens. If the casino guarantees $10 million, and let's say they have a really bad turnout, there might be people making, finishing an 11, 12 spot out of that big field and get nothing because they have to give first place $10 million. So I mean, you you run. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen, but there is that possibility. Well, the the people that get hurt on that are the ones that are at the lower end of that price. Exactly. Pool. I mean, you know, your goal when you play in the World Series main event first is pray to God I'm going to cash. Right. You know. So what's what's a cash going to end up being if they have to pull a million out of that prize? They pool? won't it's, be able. It's going to be a pittance. They won't be able to pay the top ten percent of the field, yeah. and that's usually what gets paid. You get, you get like double. You buy them for ten. Usually, you win about nineteen to twenty thousand if you finish in the top ten. That's probably going to go away. So I, I think that I think they're hurting themselves. Just leave it. It's a great event. It pays a ton of money, and 
what's the difference between eight point one million and ten million? Is there's not just I mean there is it's but a boat. <laughs> it's, it's a boat. Like <laughs> something like that. Well like well, Joe said before, you win eight million, some people stop playing. So if you win ten do you do you really going to stop playing if you stop at eight? <laughs> I'm camping in Antigua. See ya. <laughs> well, Jeannie, uh, coming up with uh, you on the World Poker Tour, uh, where are you going to be headed uh, in the future here? What's what's happening there? For the rest of season twelve, uh, for my stops, I'm going to San Jose for Bay 101. That's uh, March fifth, uh, tenth uh, through the fifteenth, and then I have the championship in April at the Brigada, and so I have two stops left for WPT for the rest of the season. And then you get to take the World Series off and hang out with me, right? Yeah, then I get to hang out with you and come watch Joe and all my friends play, and that's a good time. I live here, so I can come by whenever I want, have a good time. What's that like to <laughs> be railing somebody who's a top player like Joe all the time? It's gotta be a little fun, but stressful. Yeah, it can be stressful. Um, yeah, of course. I just always want him to do his best, and he, you know, seems to run deep a lot. And I'm always so proud of him. And um, it's fun, though. It's more fun, you know. It's, of course, I want him to do well, and I, I can get a little stressful, but fun, more fun. Well, Joe is one of the great young players in the game. He's proven it time and time again. And Joe, what are you? Uh, what do you have planned coming up here for the next few months? Um, the only really thing I know I'm doing is a. Uh, the PPP, the PPC event in Aruba in uh, October. I mean, it was super fun last year. Uh, and I mean, Aruba is just a great place. Besides that, um, you know, maybe the California WPTs most likely and the World Series. And that's all I know I'm doing. This is what's so great about Joe. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm going to go somewhere so in October. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's February. I think I'm going to one too, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm most star. likely doing Bay 101. Pretty That's sure the only thing for star. that. Aruba's the only thing I know I'm doing. <gasps> See, that's a great way to them. live. That is such an awesome way to live. Well, Joe, uh, what do you guys have coming up? Uh, obviously, I'm, hopefully not getting beat badly by I'm, Oklahoma again. I'm declaring I want a rematch. <laughs> and do you I think really? Actually, I heard it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad, but uh, I think Pete will tell you that his players had a blast and they want to come back. So, uh, Oh, yeah. We'll be back. And uh, uh, let, me, let me just put out a big plug real quick for the Nevada Poker League and Sissy and Joe. Uh, listen, guys out there, if you're uh, wanting to play some poker, get, get hooked up with these uh, people. It's a free roll. Come in, enjoy the venues, uh, the lounges, have a good time, get a drink, and uh, play poker. That's what it's all about. Uh, they put on a big-time show for uh, bar and lounge poker. And so my hat's off to you in this area, Joe you. and Sissy. Good job. And, of we, course, you guys in Oklahoma have your leagues going, We have too, a great so. time. We have a re, we had a really good time. Uh, Oklahoma represented. Uh, we, had, we represented ourselves here. Uh, we had ten players, uh, five at the final table. We were down uh, 300,000 to chips to the Don guy. Don Bocci. Yeah. Don Bocci. Yeah. And, 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 hey, hats off to uh, Darwin Brewer if you're listening, buddy. Good job, man. Thank you for bringing that trophy home. Uh, what we want to do, and we'll make this real quick, is uh, talk more about getting the representation of every state to come to uh, Las Vegas and represent uh, their states and do this uh, National Bar Poker Championship right here in Las Vegas with the Nevada Poker League. Thank you very much, Mark, oh, for having me. That is fantastic. Well, guys, thank you for coming in. What a great show we got to have today. Good time. Thanks for having us. Thank you. This is fun. Joe Surratt, Jeannie Duffy, Joe and Pete. What a Thanks, blast Mark. time. I really enjoyed it. Katie Dozier calling in as well from the Grindettes. Hey, if you go on the Mark Oak Show, you want to follow these guys on Twitter, it's right up there. They have some great stuff they send out, so make sure you follow them as well. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you for putting up with me today. I am going right back to bed. Love you all. We'll see Bye. you soon. Have a great day. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark.